Krishna, dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books, where we get transcendental sound into our ears every day, cleaning our hearts. I just heard Gopi Pranadana Prabhu say that Krishna, he lives in the hearts of all of us as the super soul and in that sense he's he's our guest and we're the host and he's such a good uh, guest that even though we keep doing things for lifetimes and making putting filth into the heart where he lives he tolerates and as soon as we awaken just even a little interest in hearing about him. He takes up the task of cleaning the heart himself, being the perfect guest. So we should try to be perfect hosts. And that's what we're doing, trying to be perfect hosts. Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram from Sri Krishna Lila Stava, texts 412 through 416, five lovely verses by Srila Sanatan Goswami glorifying the pastimes of Krishna. It goes like this Sarva Shastrabdipi Yusha, Sarva Vedaika Satpala, Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja. Sarva Lokai Kadrik Prada, O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabhu, Kalidwan Dodita Aditya, Sri Krishna Paribhartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya Prema Barshakshadayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madeka bando matsangin, madguro man mahadana, manishtadagamad bhagya, mad ananda namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhuta dayin atini chochata kada hanamun chakada chen mam prem narit kanta yoks buddha. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly. O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So, Krishna is now living in Dwarka and doing so many amazing things. So now we're going to hear about how he lives in Dwarka. Chapter 69 <clears throat> The great sage Narada visits the different homes of Lord Krishna. When the great sage Narada 
heard that Lord Krishna had married 16,000 wives after he had killed the demon Narakasura, sometimes called Bhomasura. He was astonished that Lord Krishna had expanded himself into 16,000 forms and married these wives simultaneously in, in different palaces. Being inquisitive as to how Krishna was managing his household affairs with so many wives, Narada, desiring to see these pastimes, set out to visit Krishna's different homes. When Narada arrived in Dwarka, he saw gardens and parks <clears throat> One second. My... When, when Narada arrived in Dwaraka, he saw gardens and parks full of various flowers in different colors, of different colors, and also orchards overloaded with a variety of fruits. Beautiful birds were chirping and peacocks crowed delightfully. There were ponds full of blue and red lotus flowers and some of these ponds were filled with varieties of lilies. The lakes were full of nice swans and cranes and the voices of these birds resounded everywhere. In the city there were as many as 900,000 great palaces built of first-class marble with gates and doors made of silver. The pillars of the houses and palaces were bedecked with jewels such as touchstone, sapphire, and emerald, and the floors gave off a beautiful luster. The highways, lanes, streets, crossings, and marketplaces were all beautifully decorated. The whole city was full of residential homes, assembly houses, and temples all of different architectural beauty. All of this made Dwarka's, Dwarka a glowing city. The big avenues, crossings, lanes and streets and also the thresholds of every residential house were very clean. On both sides of every path there were bushes and at regular intervals there were large trees it shaded the avenues so that the sunshine would not bother the passers-by. In this greatly beautiful city of Dwarka, Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, had many residential quarters. The great kings and princes of the world used to visit these palaces just to worship Him. The architectural plans were made personally by Vishwakarma, the engineer of the demigods, and in the construction of the palaces he exhibited all of his talents and ingenuity. These residential quarters numbered more than 16,000, and a different queen of Lord Krishna's resided in each of them. The great sage Narada entered one of these houses and saw that the pillars were made of coral and the ceilings bedecked with jewels. The walls as well as the arches between the pillars glowed from the decorations of different kinds of sapphires. Throughout the palace were many canopies made by Vishwakarma that were de decorated with strings of pearls. The chairs and other furniture were made of ivory and bedecked with gold and diamonds and jeweled lamps dissipated the darkness within the palace. There was so much incense and fragrant gum burning that the scented fumes were coming out of the windows. The peacocks sitting on the steps became illusioned by the fumes, mistaking them for clouds and began dancing jubilantly. There were many maidservants all of whom were decorated with gold necklaces, bangles, and beautiful saris. There were also many men's, men servants, nicely dressed in cloaks and turbans and jeweled earrings. Beautiful as they were, 
the servants were all engaged in different household duties. Narada saw that Lord Krishna was sitting with Rukmini Devi, the mistress of that particular palace, who was holding in the handle of a chamara whisk. Even though there were many thousands of maidservants, equally beautiful and qualified, and of the same age, Rukmini Devi personally was engaged in fanning Lord Krishna. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, worshipped even by Narada. Yet as soon as Krishna saw Narada enter the palace, he got down immediately from Rukmini's bedstead and stood up to honor him. Lord Krishna is the teacher of the whole world. And in order to instruct everyone how to respect a saintly person like Narada Muni, he bowed down, touching his helmet to the ground. Not only did Krishna bow down, but he also touched the feet of Narada and with folded hands re requested him to sit on his chair. Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, worshipped by all devotees. He is the most worshipable spiritual master of everyone. The Ganges water, which emanates from his feet, sanctifies the three worlds. All qualified Brahmanas worship him, and therefore he is called Brahmanya Deva. Brahmanya means one who fully possesses the Brahminical qualifications, which are said to be as follows, truthfulness, self-control, purity, mastery of the senses, simplicity, full knowledge of, by practical application, and engagement in devotional service. Lord Krishna possesses all these qualities, and he is worshipped by persons who themselves possess such qualities. There are thousands and millions of names of Lord Krishna, Vishnu Sahasranama, and all of them are given to him because of his transcendental qualities. Lord Krishna in Dwarka enjoyed the pastimes of a perfect human being. Therefore, when he washed the feet of the sage Narada, he took the water on his head Narada did not object, knowing well that the Lord did so to, to teach everyone how to respect saintly persons. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, who is the original Narayana, the, an eternal friend of all living entities, thus worshipped the sage Narada, according to Vedic regula regulative principles, welcoming him with sweet nectarian words. He addressed Narada as Bhagavan, or one who is self-sufficient, possessing all knowledge, renunciation, strength, fame, beauty, and other similar opulences. He particularly asked Narada, What can I do in your service? Narada replied, My dear Lord, this kind of behavior by your Lordship is not at all astonishing, for you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead and Master of all species of living entities. You are the Supreme Friend of all living entities, but at the same time you are the Supreme Chastiser of the miscreants and the envious. I know that your Lordship has descended to this earth for the proper maintenance of the whole universe. Your appearance, therefore, is not forced by any other agency. By your sweet will only, you agree to appear and disappear. It is my great fortune that I have been able to see your lotus feet today. Anyone who becomes attached to your lotus feet is elevated to the supreme position of neutrality. 
and is uncontaminated by the material modes of nature. My Lord, you are unlimited. There is no limit to your opulences. Great demigods like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva are always busy placing you within their hearts and meditating upon you. The conditioned souls who have now been put into the blind well of material existence can get out of this eternal captivity only by accepting your lotus feet. Thus, you are the only shelter of all conditioned souls. My dear Lord, you have very kindly asked what you can do for me. In answer to this, I simply request that I may not forget your lotus feet at any time. I do not care where I may be, but I pray that I constantly be allowed to remember your lotus feet. By asking this benediction from the Lord, the sage Narada showed the ideal prayer of all pure devotees. A pure devotee never asks for any kind of material or spiritual benediction from the Lord. His only prayer is that he may not forget the lotus feet of the Lord in any condition of life. A pure devotee does not care whether he is put into heaven or hell. He is satisfied anywhere, provided he can constantly remember the lotus feet of the Lord. Lord Chaitanya taught this same process of prayer in his Shikshastaka, in which he clearly stated that all he wanted was devotional service, birth after birth. A pure devotee does not even want to stop the repetition of birth and death. To a pure devotee, it does not matter whether he has to take birth again in the various species of life, his only ambition is that he not forget the lotus feet of the Lord in any condition of life. After departing from the palace of Rukmini, Naraji wanted to see further activities of Lord Krishna's internal potency, Yogamaya. Thus he entered the palace of another queen. There he saw Lord Krishna engaged in playing chess with his dear wife and Uddhava. The Lord immediately got up from his personal seat and invited Narada to, to sit there. The Lord again worshipped him with as much paraphernalia for reception as he had used in the palace of Rukmini. After worshipping him properly, Lord Krishna acted as if he did not know what had happened in the palace of Rukmini. He therefore told Narada, My dear sage, when your holiness comes here, you are full in yourself. Although we are householders and are always in need, you don't require anyone's help, for you are self-satisfied. Under the circumstances, what reception can we offer you? And what can we possibly give you? Yet since your holiness is a brahmana, it is our duty to offer you something as far as possible. Therefore I beg you to please order me. What can I do for you? Nardaji knew everything about the pastimes of the Lord, so without further discussion, he simply left the palace silently in great astonishment over the Lord's activities. He then, entered, he then entered another palace. This time, Nardaji saw that Lord Krishna was engaged as an affectionate father, petting his small children. From there, he entered another palace and saw Lord Krishna preparing to take his bath. In this way, Saint Narada entered each and every one of the 16,000 residential palaces of the queens of Lord Krishna. And in each of them, he found Krishna engaged in different ways. In one palace, he found Krishna offering oblations to the 
the sacrificial fire and performing the ritualistic ceremonies of the Vedas as enjoined for householders. In another palace, he found Krishna performing the Pancha Yagya sacrifice, which is compulsory for a householder. This Yagya is also known as Pancha Suna. Knowingly or unknowingly, everyone, especially the householder, commits five kinds of sinful activities. When we receive water from a water pitcher, we kill many germs that are in it. Similarly, when we use a grinding machine or eat food, we kill many germs. When sweeping a floor or igniting a fire, we kill many germs. And when we walk on the street, we kill many ants and other insects. Consciously or unconsciously, in all our different activities, we are killing. Therefore, it is incumbent upon every householder to perform the pancha suna sacrifice to rid himself of the reactions to such sinful activities. In one palace, <clears throat> Narada found Lord Krishna feeding brahmanas after performing ritualistic yajyas. In another palace, Narada found Krishna silently chanting the Gayatri mantra. And in a third, he found him practicing fighting with a sword and shield. In some places, Lord Krishna was found riding on horses, elephants or chariots and wandering hither and thither. Elsewhere, he was found lying down on his bedstead, taking rest. And somewhere else, he was found sitting in his chair, being praised by the prayers of his different devotees. In some of the palaces, he was found consulting with ministers like Uddhava on important matters of business. In one palace, he was found surrounded by many young society girls, enjoying in a swimming pool. In another palace, he was found giving well-decorated cows in charity to the brahmanas. <clears throat> and in another palace, he was found hearing the narrations of the Puranas and of histories such as the Mahabharata, which are supplementary scriptures for disseminating Vedic knowledge to common people by narrating important instances in the history of the universe. Somewhere, Lord Krishna was found enjoying the company of a particular wife by exchanging joking words with her. Somewhere else, he was found engaged with his wife in religious ritualistic functions. Since it is necessary for householders to increase their financial assets for various expenditures, Krishna was found somewhere engaged in manner, matters of economic development. Somewhere else he was found enjoying family life according to the regulated principles of the Shastras. In one place, he was found sitting in meditation as if concentrating his mind on the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is beyond these material universes. Meditation, as recommended in authorized scripture, is meant for concentrating one's mind on the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu. Lord Krishna is himself the original Vishnu, but because he played the part of the human being, he taught us definitely, by his personal behavior, what is meant by meditation. Somewhere Lord Krishna was found satisfying elderly superiors by supplying them things they needed. Somewhere else, Nardaji found that Lord Krishna was engaged in discussing topics of fighting and somewhere else in making peace with enemies. Somewhere Lord Krishna was found discussing the ultimate auspicious activity for the huma, hum, entire human society with his elder brother, Lord Balarama. Narada saw Lord Krishna engaged in getting his sons and daughters married with suitable brides and bridegrooms in due course of time. And the marriage ceremonies were being performed 
with great pomp. In one palace, the Lord was found bidding farewell to his daughters, and in another, he was found receiving a daughter-in-law. People throughout the whole world were astonished to see such pomp and ceremonies. Some where the Lord was seen performing different types of sacrifices to satisfy the demigods, who were only his qualitative expansions. Some where he was seen engaged in public welfare activities, establishing deep wells for the water supply, rest houses and gardens for unknown guests, and great monasteries and temples for saintly persons. These are some of the duties enjoined in the Vedas for, for householders for fulfillment of their material desires. Somewhere Krishna was found as a Chatriya king engaged in hunting animals in the forest and riding on a very beautiful Sindhi horse. According to Vedic regulations, the Chatriyas were allowed to kill prescribed animals on certain occasions, either to maintain, maintain peace in the forests or to offer the animals in sacrificial fire. Chatriyas were allowed to practice this killing, this killing art, because they had to kill their enemies mercilessly to maintain peace in society. In one situation, the great sage Narada saw Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead and Master of Mystic Powers, acting as a spy by changing his usual dress in order to understand the motives of different citizens in the city and the palaces. Saint Narada saw all these activities of the Lord who is the Supersoul of all living entities, but who played the role of an ordinary human being to manifest the activities of his internal potency. Smiling within himself, Narada addressed the Lord as follows. My dear Lord, of all mystic powers, object of the meditation of great mystics, the extent of your mystic power is certainly inconceivable. Even to mystics like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva. But, but by your mercy, because of my always being engaged in the transcendental loving service of your lotus feet, your Lordship has very kindly revealed to me <clears throat> the actions of your internal potency. My Lord, you are worshipable by all and demigods and predominating deities of all 14 plan planetary systems are completely aware of your transcendental fame. Now, please, please give me your blessings so that I may be able to travel all over the universes singing the glories of your transcendental activities. The Supreme Lord the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna, replied to Narada as follows, My dear Narada, O sage among the demigods, you know that I am the supreme instructor and perfect follower of all religious principles as well as the supreme enforcer of such principles. I am therefore personally executing such religious principles in order to teach the whole world how to act. My dear son, it is my desire that you not be bewildered by such demonstrations of my internal energy. The Supreme Personality of Godhead was engaged in his so-called household affairs in order to teach people how one can sanctify one's household life although one may be attached to the imprisonment of material existence. Actually, one is obliged to continue the term of material existence because of household life. But the Lord, being very kind upon householders, demonstrated the path of sanctifying ordinary householder life. 
because Krishna is the center of all activities, the life of a Krishna conscious householder is transcendental to Vedic injunctions and is automatically sanctified. Thus, Narada saw one single Krishna living in 16,000 palaces by his plenary expansions. Due to his inconceivable energy, he was visible in the palace of each and in, in every individual queen. Due to his inconceivable energy, he was visible in the palace of each and every individual queen. Lord Krishna has unlimited power and Narada's astonishment was boundless upon observing again and again the demonstration of Lord Krishna's internal potency, internal energy. Lord Krishna behaved by his personal example as if he were very much attached to the four principles of civilized life, namely religion, economic development, sense gratification, and salvation. These four principles of material existence are necessary for the spiritual advancement of human society. And although Lord Krishna had no need to do so, he exhibited his household activities so that people might follow in his footsteps for their own interest. Lord Krishna satisfied the sage Narada in every way. Narada was very much pleased by seeing the Lord's activities in Dwaraka and thus he departed. In narrating the activities of Lord Krishna in Dwarka, Shukadeva Goswami explained to King Parikshit how Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, descends to this material universe by the agency of His internal potency and personally exhibits the principles which if followed can lead one to achieve the ultimate goal of life. All the queens of Dwarka, more than 16,000 in number, engage their feminine attractive features in the transcendental service of the Lord by smiling and serving. And the Lord was pleased to behave with them exactly like a perfect husband enjoying household life. One should know definitely that such pastimes cannot be performed by anyone but Lord Sri Krishna, who is the original cause of the creation, maintenance, and dissolution of the whole cosmic manifestation. Anyone who attentively hears the narrations of the Lord's pastimes in Dwarka or supports a preacher of the Krishna consciousness movement will certainly find it very easy to traverse the path of liberation and taste the nectar of the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. And thus, he will be engaged in Lord Krishna's devotional service. Thus ends the Vakivedanta purport of the 69th chapter of Krishna. The great sage Narada visits the different homes of Lord Krishna. All glories to Lord Sri Krishna, the performer of unlimited, inconceivable pastimes. Hare Krishna. I mean, that's an amazing chapter. How Krishna is doing all of these different things at the same time. It's, it's inconceivable. Full faith. When one hears these pastimes with full faith, one cannot help but fall in love with Krishna. <laughs> okay, now it's 7.50 and I don't want to go late tonight. Don't mind. I'm going to stop there, the reading, and we can enjoy the uh, transcendental reflections of the devotees.
in different parts of the world. Hare Krishna. This is from Devadharana. Hey Devadharana, Hare Krishna. Jai Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> Hare Bo, glories to Srila Prabhupada. Rati Manjari says Jai Guru Maharaj. Jai Rati. From Santa Rupa Devi Dasi, she says, Jai peeks into the spiritual world. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. You know, an impersonalist, imagine the difference. The impersonalist wants to merge into the effulgence of the Lord, which he thinks is the Lord. And and he loses the ability to see any variety. How could that possibly be superior? How could it possibly be reality? Well, I guess it's part of reality. But yes, the transcendental pastimes of Krishna are... Anyway, they're unbelievable. What can I say? I'm out of words. Hare Krishna. From Sabina Kurana. Sabina? Kurana. Kura? Kurana. Kurana. Sabina Kurana. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj Ji, please accept my humble obeisances. Amazing Krishna, amazing his leelas. Yes. Jai. The word Leela means play, playing, you know, like a child, he's very active, little child, five-year-old child, four-year-old child, he's very active, he's always doing something, but he has no purpose for what he's doing, except to play, you know, pretend he's this, or pretend he's that, and he'll play like with his friends, or pretend they're this and that's happening. And it's just, that's what Leela means. It's a, it's a play, playful activity. And all of these things that Krishna does, even when he's, you know, fighting with thousands of soldiers at once and annihilating them all, and for him it's just like, it's not, a, it's not difficult, it's not an endeavor, it's not troublesome. He's playing all the time. Hare Krishna. Stella Herzig. Hare Krishna. Shadanjali. Hare Bo. Jesus. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. And from Devadarana, I comment. Hare Krishna, dear Keshava Bharti Das Maharaj. I humbly offer you my obeisances. Who is this again? David Dharana. Oh, David Dharana. Hare Krishna. I am always amazed at the causeless mercy from Lord Sri Krishna and from you. Your readings are such sweet nectar. Narada Muni is a great and wonderful pure devotee of the Lord, praised and loved by Krishna. Mm. I also offer him my deepest respects. Krishna is constantly showing us how to be good devotees. Mm. Thank you for your wonderful service. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> wonderful, wonderful reflection. Yes, Krishna is teaching us how to be, how to live properly. He's a civilized human being. Hare Krishna. When you compare what he's doing to what's going on today, and even in the most opulent situations of what people are doing, it's just, it's night and day. Jyotir Gama. 
tamasimam, jyotirgama. The Vedas say, don't stay in darkness. Go to the light. Go to the spiritual world. Hare Krishna. Sadoni Sachi Sundari says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, all glories to Lord Krishna's Leelas. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Sachi Sundari, Hare Ho. From Stita Duli Das. Stita Duli, Hare Krishna. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for taking the time to do this wonderful service. Jai Sri the Prabhupada. Jai Prabhupada, Hare Bo, Hare Bo. From Vilas Manjari. Oh, Hare Krishna Vilas Manjari, Hare Bo. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Krishna is so kind that even though conditioned souls attached to the material world are so entangled here life after life, he shows us how to positively sanctify our family life so we are graduate, gradually elevated and be happy. I was thinking how this, how kind this is, as it's not just about renouncing the world, but learning the positive alternative of Krishna consciousness. Which is simple and sublime. Yes. I just heard Gopi Puranana Prabhu <coughs> said the other day that only bhakti yoga is easy. All the other activities, the meditative process, the mystic yoga process, the 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 intellectual jnani, the the karmakandi, ritualistic performer who has to do every single movement of his body correctly or else he ruins the whole thing. Each one of those processes are uh, klesha dikadaras. They're uh, full of, they're difficult to do, troublesome. But bhak, only bhakti yoga is free and easy to do. And especially this hearing and chanting, which is the, the gateway into the higher levels of consciousness is sublimely easy to do as we're finding out and doing this every day and if you do it every day you get attached to Krishna it, nothing else can happen Haribo from Rati Manjari Hare Krishna Rati, Hare Bo. She says, Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my respectful obeisances. Tonight we have heard about the Pancha Suna Yagya, which householders need to perform to counteract sinful reactions incurred during our daily affairs. Is it necessary for us to perform this? Or is the chanting of Hare Krishna sufficient? When you chant Hare Krishna, you do millions and billions of that sacrifice. The, the, the high non parties that you're leading and getting other people to dance and chant in ecstasy and Krishna consciousness is millions and billions of times more effective uh, to protect you. From Brian Phillips? Yes, Dr. Brian. Hari Bo. He says, Hari Krishna Maharaj, another wonderful journey. Thank you so much once again for being the peon that guides this peon so kindly. <laughs> All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Prabhupada. Thanks for the compliment. I appreciate it deeply. Hare Krishna. From Ananda Murti Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna Ananda Murti. She says, Jai Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna, all assembled devotees. Thank you so much for reading Srila Prabhupada's books. How merciful is Krishna for us. Today I heard all Grihasta life, which is Krishna consciousness, transcends all the Vedas teachings and is purified by nature. Correct, that's correct. That's why the pure devotees they pray that they can just engage in pure devotional service and always remember Krishna's lotus feet, no matter where they are, no matter what situation Krishna puts them in. That's the most elevated state of consciousness. Hare Krishna. 
Saloni Sachi Sundari has a question. Hare Krishna Saloni Sachi Sundari. Hare Krishna Maharaj, for the first time hearing the Pancha Suna sacrifice, can you explain? I don't even know what it is. It's it's a it's a ritualistic sacrifice where they light a fire and they offer sacred articles and they chant different mantras. But it is for the, our age, for where we are, and and and, and who we are, uh, it is it is. I mean, I mean, there are people who are doing it in India. Some aristocratic families who's for generations and generations they they've been doing this kind of thing but as i just said to to rati uh the, this detail is really not necessary for us even if we're householders you know we we we, we install the deity of krishna in the home and we uh, chant and dance in front of them and hear about krishna's pastimes in front of them and make, make offerings to them, whatever we are going to eat and whatever we're going to serve to guests. And we are uplifted above the need, actually. So I can't tell you about the details of that yagya, suna yagya. Honestly, not, it's not recommended for the for this Kali Yuga. But the chanting of Hare Krishna is uh, the one good quality, Yogya Shishtasana Santo. It's the one good quality in this ocean of faults, which is the Kali Yuga. So we should take it with full heart, Hare Krishna. So then Sachi Sundari says, Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. And Rati Manjari says, Wow, thank you. That is a wonderful thought. Hare Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai. Hare Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai. And Japa, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, I am the, uh, jag the, the supreme yagya, which is Japa. You know, the only vow that we take is to, to a positive one is to chant japa a certain number of times a day and follow the pre regular principles so that we can chant in pure consciousness. It's the only thing the spiritual master asks us to do directly. Of course, he, there's so many things we do. We we have a morning program. We worship the deities, we uh, cook and clean and do all the things that we have to do to keep ourselves in goodness. But but the only thing that we're directly uh, ordered to do by the spiritual master, the only vow we take is to chant our rounds every day, at least 16 rounds, and try to avoid offenses. Supreme Yagya, according to Krishna, in the Gita. Hare Krishna. Another question from Rati. She says, I seem to remember that I heard that by the mercy of the Lord, Narada Muni was able to enter into Krishna's palaces simultaneously. Is this correct? No. It just described what happened in the Bhagavatam. That's somebody speculating. Or maybe somebody, maybe he does that sometimes. I don't know. But the Bhagavatam says he goes from one palace to another. It's clear. Take it from the Bhagavatam. Summum bonum. Simple. Clear. Hare Krishna. Another uh, comment from Ananda Murti Devi Das. Mm -hmm. He says, Jai, yesterday we had a kirtan program with 30 new devotees. 30 new devotees, wow. It was so wonderful. And I have distributed 45 Bhagavad Gita's by your mercy and all the devotees' mercy. 
Wow, very nice, very nice. We have read Bhagavad Gita together. Very nice. I have introduced them how Lord Chaitanya is merciful. Wonderful. This is big, 30 new people at a program. Very wonderful. Keep up the good work, Anandamurti. You're, you're exemplar, exemplar householder. Rati Manjari says, All right, I will. Thank you, Guru Nanak. Hare Krishna. Oh, thank you very much for all those lovely uh, reflections. Thank you so much for your kind words upon me, for doing this uh, daily yagya. It's not a yagya. I mean, it is a yagya, but it's hardly a yagya. It's the m most blissful thing I've ever done in my life, practically, to read to the devotees like this out loud. It's so relishable. Shri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, ki jai. Samaveda Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo. See you tomorrow night. Same time, same place, same topic. The unlimited glories, glorious pastimes of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hari Bo. See you tomorrow.